my life is pretty straightforward. I'm all about fitness, health, and apparently, drama. At 26, I'm juggling my career as a fitness trainer and managing my health blog. That's where I met Mark at the sports center. What began as a casual connection quickly blossomed into something special. He has this vibe that's hard to ignore, and before we knew it, we were caught up in what you might call whirlwind romance. Let me set the scene for you. It was a scorching summer day, and I was about to meet Mark's family for the first time. I felt a mix of nerves and excitement, dressed in a simple knee-length dress with short sleeves. Nothing flashy but apparently enough to stir the pot. Mark had warned me that his family was a bit traditional and protective. He mentioned his mom, Linda, in a tone that left me puzzled. She has strong opinions, but don't take it to heart, he said, oblivious to the fact that those were more like red flags than reassurances. As we stepped into their family home, Mark's younger brother, Alex, greeted us with a hearty smile. Then came Linda. The atmosphere shifted dramatically. It felt like the temperature dropped a few degrees. Her eyes scanned me from head to toe, lingering on my arms. Is this how you dress to meet your future mother-in-law? She asked, her voice icy. A bit bold, don't you think? I was taken aback, scrambling for the right words. Mark squeezed my hand, a silent show of support. Well, it's summer, and it's pretty hot outside. I thought this outfit was decent and comfortable, I managed to say. Comfortable or not, it's about first impressions, Linda shot back. I would have expected something more appropriate. Mark jumped in to smooth things over. Mom, it's really hot today. Erica looks fine, let's not start off on the wrong foot. But Linda wouldn't let it go. I'm just saying, Mark, it's about respect. But fine, let's have dinner. Dinner turned into a tense affair the conversations around me feeling superficial while Linda's earlier remarks loomed overhead like a dark cloud. Alex tried to lighten the mood with jokes and stories, and I was grateful for his effort. Mark kept giving me reassuring looks, but I could sense the damage was done. After dinner, while I was helping with the dishes, Linda cornered me in the kitchen. Listen, dear, I'm just looking out for my son. He's a good boy, and I don't want him to make a mistake. I was floored. A mistake. Linda, I love Mark. I'm not here to play games. I don't know what gave you a bad impression, but that's not me. She shook her head. We'll see. Time tells all truths. The ride home was quiet and Mark apologized for his mom's behavior, though I could tell he was upset too. She can be protective, but this is too much. I sighed and leaned back in the seat. It's okay, Mark, but if this is how it's going to be, we have a rocky road ahead. As wedding planning began in earnest, Mark and I were all in, picking out decorations, tasting cakes, and finding the perfect attire. I fell in love with a stunning dress, sleek and just a bit revealing, but nothing outrageous or so I thought until Linda caught a glimpse. You plan on wearing that in front of the whole family, she blurted out. It looks like you're aiming for a beach party rather than a wedding. I tried to laugh it off. It's just modern, Linda. Plus, it'll be a warm day, and I want to feel comfortable. Mark squeezed my hand, a signal to avoid a battle we couldn't win, but Linda's frown said it all. She muttered something about tradition and decency as she walked off. I thought if a dress could stir the pot, what lay ahead? After that initial clash with Linda, things settled into a tense routine. I threw myself into work and my blog, which became my sanctuary, my space where I felt in control and could share my passion for fitness and health. It never crossed my mind that this very passion would stir the pot once again. One evening, Mark and I were lounging on the couch during a rare moment of downtime when he suddenly frowned, scrolling through his phone. Babe, we need to talk, he said, his tone serious. I sat up, alarmed. What's up? He handed me his phone, revealing my Instagram profile. In the comments of my latest post were a mix of supportive and flirty messages, totally normal, in my opinion. Okay, I was confused. It's just Instagram, Mark. People comment, that's how it works. Yeah, but my mom is making a big deal out of it, he replied, frustration creeping into his voice. She's convinced you're inviting attention. Anger surged through me. Are you kidding me? It's Instagram for crying out loud. I snatched the phone from him and scrolled through the comments. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, yet Linda had twisted it into something sordid. So what am I supposed to do? Police who comments on my posts. I shot back. No, of course not, but maybe we could limit who can comment until this blows over. His suggestion was well-meaning but infuriating. So, I have to censor my account because your mom has a twisted view of me. Hell no, that's not happening. 
Fast forward through the Instagram saga where Linda twisted my every move into scandal. Things got stickier when Alex, bless him, began giving me rides home from work since his office was just a block from the gym. It was innocent convenience, but not in Linda's eyes. During a family dinner, with tension thick in the air, she leaned in with her usual insinuations. Nice of Alex to play chauffeur, isn't it? Mark's jaw tensed, and I noticed Alex stiffen beside him. Mom, what are you implying? Mark's voice had that warning edge, but Linda was on a roll. Oh, nothing. Just making conversation, she replied, feigning innocence while her eyes darted between me and Alex. The atmosphere was like a lit fuse. Stop it, Mom. You're out of line. Alex snapped, clearly at his limit. The argument escalated from there, with Mark caught in the middle, torn between his brother and his mother's accusations. The drive home was silent, the weight of the accusations heavy in the air. I couldn't believe Linda would stoop so low, using Alex's kindness as a weapon against me. The entire mess with Linda reached a boiling point, and I could only wonder how we would navigate the storm ahead. I never imagined it would come to this, but after Linda's latest stunt, accusing me of cheating because Alex offered me a few rides home, I hit my breaking point. I told Mark outright, your mom is not welcome in our house anymore. I can't take this anymore, she's crossed too many lines. You think I had declared war? Linda erupted when she heard about the ban, but honestly, I was beyond caring. Her constant digs and accusations were one thing, but what happened next was a real gut punch. A couple of months later, I found out I was pregnant. What should have been a joyous revelation turned to chaos when Linda decided to spin a new tale. She told Mark, How do you know that child is yours? With all those men at her gym, who knows? Hearing that venom come from his own mother felt like a knife in my gut. I could see the doubt creep into Mark's eyes, a look that shattered the solid bond we once shared. One night, after overhearing yet another of their phone calls, I confronted Mark. So, what? You think I'm cheating? That this baby isn't yours? My voice was sharp, tinged with hurt and anger. Mark looked torn, a shadow with himself. I don't know what to think anymore, Erica. My mom has all these ideas. And you're going to take her word over mine? Over everything we've built together? I interrupted, disbelief coloring my tone. He didn't answer, shuffling his feet and avoiding my gaze. That silence spoke volumes more than any argument could. Things grew colder between us after that. Conversations became clipped and filled with tension. It was like living with a stranger. The joy of our upcoming baby was overshadowed by this cloud of suspicion and doubt. When our baby boy finally arrived, with his fair hair and bright blue eyes, I thought maybe things would start to look up. But I couldn't have been more wrong. As he grew, his features became even more pronounced, making him the spitting image of a golden-haired angel. The problem? Mark, my husband, was as brunette and dark-eyed as they come, giving Linda even more ammunition for her relentless accusations. In a last-ditch effort to quell the ridiculousness, I dug up old childhood photos to show both Linda and Mark. Look, I said, pointing to a picture of me at five, blonde and blue-eyed just like our son. It's genetics, Linda. Can't you see the resemblance? But Linda merely sniffed, unimpressed, her eyes narrowing. Convenient, isn't it, that your genes decided to pop up now? And Alex being blonde doesn't help your case. Mark stood there, caught in the middle, his face a mix of confusion and hurt. The tension was unbearable. Things reached a breaking point at our son's first birthday party. With all the guests cooing over the baby, Linda couldn't help but make a scene. This child looks nothing like my son. Everyone can see it. We need a DNA test to prove who the father really is, she announced loudly, making everyone uncomfortable. I was livid, my face burning with embarrassment and anger. Are you out of your mind, Linda? Accusing me in front of everyone? No way am I doing some tests just because your paranoia has gone off the rails. My voice stripped with indignation. It was humiliating to be accused like that, especially in front of friends and family. But then Mark intervened, just not in the way I had hoped. Actually, we're doing it, he said, his voice cold, a hardness in his eyes that I had never seen before. If you've got nothing to hide, then there's no issue. We'll do the tests, or we're done. I can't be married to someone I don't trust. I was floored. Are you serious? You're choosing your mom's crazy accusations over me. Over your son. He didn't budge, not even flinching at my words. It's not just my mom. There's too much doubt, too much talk. The test will clear things up one way or another, and until then. 
My heart was in my throat, dreading his next words. Pack your bags. Stay somewhere else. I can't look at you. Not now. Not with these doubts. His words cut through me, leaving the chilling emptiness in their wake. So there I was, packing my things in a rage, my hands shaking with a mix of fury and hurt. Our baby boy, blissfully unaware, watched with wide, innocent eyes as his world, and mine, crumbled. I left, heading to the only place I could think of, my mom's. She was waiting with open arms. When I arrived at my mom's house, I barely made it through the door before I broke down. He kicked us out, mom, over some DNA tests. Linda convinced him we need it. My mother's fury flared instantly. I'll go over there and give Mark a piece of my mind, over my dead body. But I stopped her. No, it's not worth it. Not right now. That night, I replayed every moment in my mind, trying to pinpoint where it all went wrong. How had we gone from being so in love to questioning our baby's paternity, and Alex caught up in this mess for no reason other than Linda's spite? The fallout from my son's first birthday party had been swift. News of Linda's accusations spread like wildfire, and it felt as if the entire city was whispering behind my back before the party favors were even picked up. My friends, my mom's friends, even the neighbors who had watched me grow up, they were all talking. It felt like I was living in a nightmare. Fed up and desperate to clear my name, I decided to go through with the DNA tests. I picked up the phone and called Mark, my voice steady despite my trembling hands. I'll do the test. I cut straight to the chase. There was a pause on the other end, then Mark replied, his voice unnervingly calm. I knew you'd come around. It's for the best. When I arrived at the clinic, I was a bundle of nerves. Mark looked like he was carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders, and to my surprise, so was Alex. Why is he here? I asked, my voice edged with irritation as I nodded toward my brother. Mark did admit my gaze. There's been talk that you and Alex, you know, he's getting tested too. My blood boiled at the implication. You think I'd cheat on you with your brother? That's how little you trust me. Before Mark could respond, the specialist called us in, momentarily breaking the tension. Inside, the specialist laid it out clearly. Determining paternity could get complicated when potential fathers were siblings. We'll need additional samples from everyone involved, including you, Erica, to ensure accuracy. So, we each gave our samples, lost in our thoughts. Alex looked mortified. Mark appeared conflicted. And me. I was just angry. Angry that it had come to this, angry at Linda, and angry at Mark for allowing his mother's paranoia to escalate so far. Once the tests were done, we were told it would be a couple of weeks before we got the results. Those weeks dragged on, each day a torturous reminder of the uncertainty looming over our future. I didn't sit idle, though. I made a few calls and spoke to a man who promised he could help with a delicate matter. I didn't know if it would lead anywhere, but I had to try something. Finally, the day arrived for the grand reveal. The tension in Linda's living room felt almost tangible, racking its icy fingers around my heart. My son clutched my hand, sensing the storm brewing but oblivious to its cause. Ever the self-appointed master of ceremonies, Linda dramatically sliced open the envelope containing the DNA test results, her anticipation palpable as she hoped for a scandal that would validate her accusations. But the moment she peeked inside, her expression faltered and disappointment washed over her. The father is Mark, she announced, her voice losing its usual sharpness. Mark, who had been a bundle of nerves, visibly relaxed, a smug smile spreading across his face as he turned to me. Well, there you have it. No harm done, right? You can come back home now. His words ignited a fierce mix of disbelief and anger within me, and I couldn't help but let out a bitter laugh. Come back after all this. You must be joking. He blinked, taken aback by my reaction. But you're innocent, Erica. Isn't that what you wanted? That's when I played my hand, pulling out the divorce papers I had kept hidden away. The silence that followed was deafening as I laid them on the table. Mark's face went from confident to pale, sheer panic taking over. What's this? Why divorce papers? I replied, the words tasting like freedom, and then I produced the photos, undeniable proof of Mark's infidelity captured in vivid detail by the private detective I had secretly hired. Watching him transform from confident to broken was almost pitiful. He started to babble apologies, his earlier bravado crumbling away. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. Please let's talk about this. Talk. I scoffed, my voice cold. You dragged my name through the mud and let your mother accuse me of the worst. All the while, 
You were the one cheating. There's nothing to talk about. Linda, who had been relishing the drama, now tried to intervene, her earlier eagerness replaced by desperation. Now, dear, let's all calm down. We can fix this. Fix this. I cut her off sharply. Your son is a cheat, and you're no better for stirring this trouble based on lies. After I laid out the proof of Mark's betrayal for all to see, the room became a battleground of broken bonds and shattered illusions. Linda couldn't tear her eyes away from the photos spread across the coffee table, each one a testament to betrayal. I'm not just walking away, Mark. I will be demanding alimony and compensation for this treachery, I declared, my voice steady yet seething with anger. Mark's face drained of color, his earlier bravado evaporating into thin air. You can't be serious, he stammered, looking from the photos to his mother, searching for some kind of refuge. Linda, ever the matriarch, attempted to regain control. Oh please, she was never right for you. She would have cheated on you sooner or later. You're better off without her. That's when Alex, who had been simmering quietly with rage, exploded. Enough. His voice echoed off the walls. I'm done with all of this, with both of you, he pointed at his mother and brother. After everything you put her through based on nothing but your twisted suspicions, I'm out. Linda turned to him, her face a mask of shock and desperation. Alex, please don't say that. I was just trying to protect our family. Protect? He scoffed, his scorn palpable. Is that what you call this? Destroying relationships and spreading lies? I can't be part of this family if this is what it stands for. I'm moving to another city and starting fresh away from all this madness. Later, as I relayed the events to my mom, her words provided a cold comfort. That's the price of Linda's folly. Her arrogance and stupidity cost her her own sons. Maybe now she'll see the harm she's caused. The fallout was immediate and absolute. Alex followed through on his promise, moving away and cutting ties. Mark was left to face the consequences of his actions with his mother's manipulations creating a chasm too wide to bridge between them. Life after the dust settled was different, not easier, but clearer, like I was seeing everything for the first time again. My mom and I had many long talks about it, sitting on her old comfy sofa with cups of tea that always seemed to go cold before we finished. Mom, I started one evening, the sky outside painted with calm I didn't quite feel inside. Do you think I made the right choice with everything? The divorce? Standing up to Linda and Mark like that? My mom set her cup down, looking at me with those wise eyes that had seen more of life than I ever wished to. Darling, you did what you had to do. You stood up for yourself, for your dignity. That's more important than staying in a marriage built on distrust. The biggest change, besides the obvious, was Alex's departure. He called me once just before leaving. I can't stay here. Not after everything. I need to start fresh somewhere where every corner doesn't remind me of all this. I understand, I said. You'll always have a friend in me, Alex. You were the only one who really saw me through this mess. He chuckled, the sound holding a shadow of our shared troubles. You take care of yourself, all right? After hanging up, I felt a pang of loss, not just for the relationship I thought I had with Mark, but for the family I thought I belonged to. Months passed and life found a new rhythm. My blog started gaining traction, becoming a space where I could share not just fitness and health tips, but also personal stories of resilience and starting over. It resonated with people more than I expected. As I settled into this new chapter of my life, finding solace in the routine I'd built for me and my son, my phone rang out of the blue one afternoon. The screen flashed a name I hadn't seen in a while, Linda. My initial instinct was to ignore it, let it go to voicemail but something, maybe curiosity or a desire to finally put it all to rest, made me answer. Hello. Her voice came through shaky and laced with regret. Erica, I was wondering, could I see him? My grandson. The audacity of her request stopped me cold. I was transported back to that living room, feeling the weight of her accusations all over again. You've got some nerve, Linda, I said, my voice steady but firm. After all the hell you put us through, now you want to play grandma? You didn't even want to see him before. She started to cry, mumbling apologies between sobs, trying to explain herself. But I wasn't having any of it. Save your tears, Linda. It's too late for sorry. But please, I just want to make things right, she pleaded, desperation creeping into her voice. I sighed, a deep, weary sigh. You should have thought of that before you made your bed. Now you get to lie in it alone. 
Without waiting for her response, I hung up. The finality of the click echoed through me. It was harsh, but necessary. A line had been drawn, and for the first time in a long while, I felt like I was in control of where things were headed. Looking at my son, now a little older and wiser beyond his years, I knew we were going to be okay. We had each other, and a future that was ours to shape.